Number 10, glass sponges. These mysterious creatures could give scientists the key to understanding some crucial components to climate change. At one time, this curious species of sponge was thought to be extinct. But then, in 1987, a Canadian team of scientists discovered a cluster that was over 9,000 years old. It was over 9,000! That's pretty insane. Yeah, that's also a fact. They can live for thousands of years. They feed off plankton and other small sources of food and can filter enough water in 60 seconds to fill an Olympic sized pool. They also don't look appetizing and mostly serve as homes to other kinds of fish and crustaceans and that stuff. Starfish tend to feed on them because they're really weird, but that's about it. The thing that makes them so interesting though is their ability to store carbon. Ever since the ice shelf started to disappear, they started appearing in Antarctica. They're called glass sponges because they're made of silica. If scientists are able to figure out the correlation between the two, then it might reveal some key factors about climate change. Can I say it never will be solved? Not quite, but it certainly does feel like a mystery worth solving. Number nine, the C-130. Another aircraft, another aircraft, gone without a trace. Chilean Air Force Flight C-130 left Patagonia, Chile and was bound for King George Island in Antarctica. They were meant to bring supplies and personnel to inspect a floating fuel supply line, but they never made it. They lost contact with the plane around 9.13 PM and no one heard anything about the plane having any issues. They conducted a search by air using aircraft from the Chilean Air Force, Argentina, Brazil, UK, US and Uruguay, but nothing. There were no signs of the crash, that is, until debris was found floating 31 kilometers from its last known position. But to this day, no one knows exactly what happened during that fateful crash that stole their lives. Number 8. The Gambertsev Mountains Actual mountains of ice will have to melt until this mystery is completely solved. Until then, it's a pretty marvelous mountainous mystery. Stretching across 1200 kilometers and rising a third of the height of Mount Everest are the Gambertsev Mountains, except they are hidden underneath two to four kilometers of ice. They are named after Gregory A. Gambertsev, a Soviet geophysicist who made the discovery in 1958. From what they can tell through radar technology, the mountains are over a billion years old. They've been able to map the mountains by abnormal gravity fluctuations, but by all sides scientific reasons they should have eroded by now, but they haven't. One hypothesis is that the erosion process simply paused once the ice got thick enough, but still we won't really know the answer until we can fully look at those mountains. And it might take a billion years for that ice to melt, so who knows. Number 7. Shackleton's Lost Ship Ooh, Love a good lost ship story. Ironically, Captain Shackleton's ship was named the Endurance and was supposed to be ideal for navigating the icy waters of Antarctica. But alas, Sir Ernest Shackleton along with his faithful crew crew were forced to abandon ship in 1915. The Endurance became trapped by massive boulders of ice and then began to sink beneath the Weddell Sea. The crew escaped though, which is good, traveling 720 nautical miles before they were able to reach shore and be rescued. Researchers in the UK were captivated by its loss and desperately desired to retrieve it and they finally attempted it in 2019. They got a whole team together, but unfortunately the escapade was unsuccessful. The submarine they sent looking for it ended up trapped down there as well. They never saw it again and were not able to find the wreckage while they were at it. So whether or not the endurance continues to endure beneath the waves of that unforgiving portion of the sea, we will never know. Or if they try again, who knows. Number 6. Edgar Evans By all counts, Edgar Evans was a positive, cheerful member of Robert Falcon Scott's soon to be doomed exposition to the South Pole. So when Edgar started to act distant and his temperament started changing, his team knew something was wrong. Canadian Dr. RCF Falk came to the conclusion that he died from accidental anthrax poisoning in 1986. Anthrax could have been trapped within the ice and Evans' mental and physical health declined when he hit his head on the beer more glacier. The doctor on the crew believed it was due to damage to his skull. Then as his symptoms changed, they thought it was scurvy, dehydration, or the high altitude causing the problems. But even before the Beardmore Glacier, his mood was changing, so it couldn't have been the fall or the ice. To this day, no one really knows how or why he died. He just didn't come back after lunch one day, and Scott recorded, I was the first to reach the poor man and was shocked by his appearance. He was on his knees with his clothes disarrayed, hands covered and frostbitten, and a wild look in his his eyes." Unquote. He later died and the site of his grave has never been found, so without an autopsy, 
we may never find out. Number five, Rodney Marks. This is a case colder than any iceberg in the South Pole, and it will forever remain that way. Rodney Marks was an astrophysicist who worked at the South Pole at the Amundsen Scott Base in 2000. He suddenly fell really ill and passed away, so they put his body into storage until a coroner could review him. Turns out the cause of death was methanol poisoning. Methanol was used as a cleaning solution at the base, and somehow lethal amounts of it were found in his system. An accidental ingestion were overruled when syringe marks were found in his arm. The question of murder rose instead. Mark's colleagues quickly left when the spring came before a proper inquiry could be made, and New Zealand police were met with a wall of silence. With the same people living day in and day out, who knows how high tensions rose, but with tons of evidence thrown away and the findings never released, this is one case that will remain frozen in more ways than one. Number four, Xavier Mertz. For over a century, many believed the survival of Douglas Mawson during the 1912 South Pole expedition was an open and shut case. It was a miraculous case of human resilience. But historian David Dogg believes that Mawson's loyalty to his dying friend wasn't what it appeared to be. Their other accomplice died earlier on in the adventure when he fell into a crevice along with a sled and all their supplies. Mertz and Mawson only had a few things. They tried to make it back on rations, but Mertz died on January 27th. But Day thinks that Mawson cut the rations, therefore making Mertz perish first. Even with what they had, they had to eat the sled dogs, and Mawson recorded they killed the last dog on December 28th, but he still described cooking dog meat on January 10th, leading Day to believe that he may have eaten another corpse lying around. Yeah. Mertz's body has never been found, and may never be, especially if nothing is left. Not even time will be able to reveal what really happened, so I guess... It'll stay with Mawson. Number three, the anomaly. Who knows what is trapped beneath the billion year old ice that coats Antarctica? Mountains, disease, forests, who knows? But there's one thing that scientists can't quite unravel. Beneath Wilkes Land in Antarctica, there's an object 151 miles across and 2,700 feet deep that could change what we know of human history. Scientists believe that it may be from space, perhaps the asteroid that caused the Permian Triassic extinction. It was first discovered in 2006 when NASA spotted gravitational changes in the area indicating an object of immense size. Is it an asteroid or is it something bigger? Something so huge that it may even answer the age old question of what else is out there? Some conspiracies revolve around a spaceship that may have crashed here billions of years ago. Whatever the case, we may not be around when the ice finally decides to reveal it. So that sucks for us, I guess. <laughs> Number two, the ship Jenny. Fact or fiction, the existence of the ship Jenny may be lost to history and continue to be dismissed as a myth. But here is the story so you can decide for yourself. The tale goes that Jenny became trapped in an ice barrier at the Drake Passage in 1823. It was allegedly discovered in 1840 by a whaling ship poetically called Hope, and the captain made a disturbing discovery. The ship looked as though it was still being manned, with seven members of the crew standing to attention on the deck. But as they got closer, it was then they realized they were dead. The entire crew was preserved by the Antarctic cold. Even creepier was the logbook which featured this entry. Entry. May 4th, 1823. No food for 71 days. I am the only one left alive. Unquote. The captain who wrote this was found sitting, still as death, in the chair. The tale has been romanticized in a novel called The Ghost Ship by John Conroy Hutchinson, so perhaps that's why people think it's just a story. But I guess we'll never know, will we? Number one, Carl Robert Dish. Out of all the cases on this list, this one is definitely the most mysterious and will remain just that, a mystery. Carl worked for the National Bureau of Standards and was staying at Bird Station in 1965 just for the winter. Something he normally had to do was follow a hand line to the main station complex so he never got lost. But on May 8th, he went out on a trip he made over 25 times, only this time he didn't return. When he did not return to Bird Station, they went searching and did find a trail leading west. The weather was pretty bad and it was really dark, so the next day, they decided to head out with vehicles. They found tracks again, heading south, but then they just disappeared. They noted that his steps seemed purposeful and that his stride didn't vary, like he was heading towards something. Searches continued for days and days, but no sign of dirt was ever found. Starting us off at number 10 is the Ninja. Arguably the most famous folklore creature associated with Antarctica, the Ninja is said to be a terrifying deep sea cryptid that has been terrorizing sailors for centuries. First recorded in the early 1700s by Japanese sailors who were 
exploring the southern ocean, the Ninjin is often described as an enormous white creature with an elongated head and body that resembles that of a whale. But the creepiest part is that many tales describe it as having two human legs. I mean, just look at that thing. Creepy. Now, the Ninjin has recently had a sort of resurgence after an alleged government employee spotted the creature on a research vessel. Originally posted to 2chan, many others came forward with photos or video. They claimed to be the exact same creature, but officially, no confirmation of its existence has ever been set in stone. Some think it could be an alien, others are firm that it's a sea monster, but either way, it is one of the most feared cryptids in all of the Antarctic. Moving on to number 9, Antarctic Godzilla. Deep in the freezing temperatures of the Antarctic Sea, it's said there lies a creature so frightening that even one look into their eyes could be your last. Allegedly first spotted by a Japanese research trip in 1958, the Antarctic Godzilla is described as a monster with a head length of 30 inches who looks like a cow from the front but a monkey from the top. Said to be covered in brown, dark hair with large eyes and pointed ears, the worst and scariest part of this creature is the serrated fin on its back that it can use to slice you in two at the slightest sign of aggression. Which frankly sounds terrifying. But it only gets worse. So as this creature is named Antarctic Godzilla, it's, you know, supposed to be super huge and terrifying, but it's believed that it can survive in not just water, but land too. So pretty much you are never safe. So really it's just one more reason that visiting the Antarctic isn't really for me. Moving on to number eight, an alien base. We have reached that time in our list where we get to talk about everyone's favorite mysterious being, the aliens of course. Now when it comes to aliens, there are lots of opinions about how real or not real they are, but if this next story is to be believed, there is allegedly a secret alien base with advanced and unconventional weapons hidden in the icy waters of the Antarctic. So according to a video uploaded by UFO hunters, a mysterious anomaly about 180 kilometers off the coast of Antarctica has been spotted and they think not only is it some kind of hangar for a spaceship, but that actual aliens are likely residing there too. Now this may be more on the conspiracy side of things rather than urban legend, but whatever. It's all fun. Believers claim that an expedition should be organized so we can confirm the existence of the aliens, but others think that if we aren't careful, we may just kick off an intergalactic war. So whatever it is, let's just hope we tread carefully. Moving on to number seven, Deception Island Sea Monster. In 1906, a Norwegian Chilean whaling company started using Whalers Bay as a base for their factory ship. Other operations followed closely behind them, and then the next thing you know, it was a boom town. But then by just 1931, after a sweeping decline in the market for whale oil due to the Great Depression, the island was abandoned. Since then, it has quite literally been a ghost town, with visitors reporting seeing strange orbs of light coming from the abandoned huts, seeing apparitions of people walking around, and even hearing disembodied voices. But it's not just ghosts and ghouls that are said to creep around the island, but a mysterious, inexplicable monster as well. This satellite image found on Google Earth has spawned numerous theories about what could be hiding in the area, but so far no one has ever come across it to be able to find out more. Next up at number 6, the Drake Passage. So obviously the Drake Passage itself is not an urban legend, there's no question about that, but there are many urban legends that go along with it. As many people likely already know, the Drake Passage is considered to be one of the most powerful convergence of seas. Located where the Atlantic and the Pacific Ocean converge with the Southern Seas, it is notorious for its treacherous waters and even more notorious for the alleged souls who lost their lives while trying to cross it. It's said over the years that more than a thousand people have died attempting to pass through its terrifying and turbulent waves, and many believe that all who have lost their lives to the passage remain haunting the waters to warn those that attempt the feat to turn back. However, the most terrifying legends say they are not there to warn you, they are trying to bring you into their realm with them. So 
across the Drake Passage if you dare. Moving on to number 5, Fallen Angels. According to the Book of Enoch, which is an ancient Hebrew apocalyptic religious text, thousands of years ago, 200 fallen angels came down to earth and found solace on Mount Hermon. Upon their arrival, the fallen angels began to intertwine themselves with the inhabitants of the area, stealing away their daughters for themselves, and soon a war broke out with a hybrid race of giants called the Nephilim that ultimately punished the angels for eternity. After losing the war, it said the fallen angels were sent to be imprisoned in a mountain in Antarctica where they will remain frozen for eternity. But of course, there could be a way out of eternity, and some believe if we aren't careful, one one wrong move could unleash them from their icy prison and send the world into a celestial war. Coming in at number 4, a fascist base. In the late 1930s, just before World War II broke out, fascist Germany set out on an expedition to explore Antarctica and eventually came across a section of land that they declared was theirs. New Swabia. Now, this defunct area has long been the subject of legends and conspiracies through the years, but none more terrifying than the legend of the base. As the story goes, in the wake of the expedition, the party built a huge, top secret military base there. And after the war, high ranking leaders, scientists, and elite military units who were trying to evade their crimes are claimed to have escaped to this base and survived. But that's not all. Some stories say that this base is not just a top secret hideout for the world's most notorious and evil man, but since the party was often associated with occult practices, some say that the base also leads to aliens, demons, and even an entrance to inner earth. Moving on to number 3, Scott's Hut. During the early 1900s, there was a huge race to be the first country to reach the South Pole. Then in 1911, explorer Robert Falcon Scott and his team set out on a mission against Norway, later called the Terra Nova Expedition, to do just that. A hut was pre-constructed in Britain that was brought over as a base camp for the crew and they set it up near the Great Ice Barrier. Eventually, it was decided some men would stay behind with supplies and shelter and the rest of the team would venture out further. But sadly, their mission was ultimately a bust, as by the time they reached the pole, the Norwegian flag had already been planted. So the men turned around to head back. But sadly, due to frostbite, starvation, and disease, the men died off one by one and never made their return. Ever since, legend has it that the hut is where the ghosts of the parish men live, and visitors claim that you can hear strange voices and footsteps all around the cabin. Apparently, the minute you walk in, you feel as though you're being watched, and some even swear they have seen the ghosts of Scott and his men lurk inside. Moving on to number two, Mount Erebus. Mount Erebus is the southernmost volcano on Earth, and it is still very much active. Some like to refer to it as the place where fire meets ice, as well inside the mountain it is still swirling with hot molten magma. The outside remains frozen solid and surrounded by ice caves. And while that might sound super cool, it is also the site of the infamous Ross Island plane crash, and that is where our urban legend begins. One fateful day in 1979, a tourist plane from New Zealand was flying over Antarctica. Though exactly what happened is unknown, somehow the computer directing the flight got rerouted and instead of taking the usual route, ended up flying dangerously close to the mountain and in the blink of an eye, the plane crashed, instantly killing all 257 passengers and crew members on board. Said to be overwhelmed with ghosts seeking revenge for having their lives taken too soon, many of the spirits are said to roam the island, wandering around the frigid landscape waiting for unsuspecting visitors to walk past. And some say that if you walk past the mountain, you can still hear the screams of the victims who lost their lives to the crash. 
And last up in our number one spot today, the ghost ship of Jenny. As the legend goes, while crossing over the Drake Passage in 1823, the British vessel Jenny got stuck in the ice and was never seen again. For years, no one knew where it really was, what had happened to the boat, or if the crew had survived the treacherous crash. However, about 20 years later, it said a whaling ship discovered them and believing it to be the legendary Jenny, decided to go on board and check out what might still be on it. Legend says the crew made their way onto the ship, but were horrified to find all the bodies frozen, solid, and perfectly preserved by the ice. However, the most disturbing part was the note they found in the hand of a corpse they believed to be the captain. The note read May 4th, 1823. No food for 71 days. I am the only one left alive. It said the crew were so frightened of the sight that they left all the bodies alone and took only the logbook when they left. However, no one has ever seen the logbook or Jenny again, nor has anyone ever seen the men who allegedly discovered Jenny all those years ago. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have Molly virus. Back in 2015, French researchers discovered a gigantic virus that they found in a sample of Siberian permafrost. This spherical DNA virus wasn't just any old virus, no, this one was about 30,000 years old. For the virus to survive that long, frozen in ice, truly is remarkable and also absolutely terrifying. There is good news, however, it is said that although some refer to this virus as a behemoth, it is said that the new discovery only infects amoebas, which means that it is unlikely to ravage the planet anytime soon. At least we hope. In our number nine spot today, we have Lake Vostok. Many of us have heard of Atlantis, but have you heard of Lake Vostok? This lake is located in Antarctica and it is so huge, it's one one of the largest lakes in the entire world. The lake not only has a large surface area, but it's also quite deep, which only adds to the volume of the lake. It's like the lakiest lake out there, and here's the thing about it. It is covered by ice, and not just any ice, but the East Antarctic Ice Sheet, which is just the largest ice sheet in the world. This subglacial lake has ice so thick that we don't really know a lot about what lies beneath it, and the ice has been there for millions of years. But when the first samples of the actual lake water were taken, it became apparent that there may be species in the lake that we know absolutely nothing about. In our number eight spot today, we have the female mummy. Back in 2017, there was a mummy found in Siberia that absolutely rocked the scientific community. This discovery was so remarkable because deep within the permafrost, close to the Arctic Circle, they found the mummified remains of a woman who was roughly 900 years old. Said to have come from the medieval times, this marked the first woman to be discovered in that area, as previously it had been mostly men. It appears as though the mummification part was accidental, but it was quite a surprise to researchers who had thought that they wouldn't find a woman's remains in the area at all. It is said that all of the bodies found in this area belonged to a hunting and fishing civilization, and this discovery gave experts very valuable insight into their lives and the times in which they lived. In our number seven spot today, we have Mount Erebus. Mount Erebus is the highest active volcano in Antarctica, as well as the southernmost active volcano on Earth. Got a lot going on. The volcano has been active for 1.3 million years and it features a lava lake in the inner summit crater that's been present since the early 1970s. You might be thinking, uh, it's a volcano, which surely is like the opposite of ice, right? But as it turns out, this volcano is like the definition of fire and ice. Here you can be sure to find numerous ice fumaroles, which are ice towers that form around the gases that are released or that escape from the vents on the surface. This creates a perfect home, not for many, but for some persevering and adaptable bacteria and fungi. This gives scientists quite the opportunity to study these organisms that can live in this extreme environment that doesn't really provide a lot of resources. In our number six spot today, we have the Iceman. The mummy of Otzi, who is also referred to as the Iceman, was found in 1991 in the Otzel Alps in Italy. It is believed that Otzi lived around 3000 BC and his body became mummified and preserved because of the glacier that surrounded him post-mortem. While this is an incredibly interesting discovery, the finding of Otzi may have come in a package with an old curse just waiting to be released. Here's the thing, the people who helped with the discovery of Otzi are all dying under mysterious circumstances. I mean, it is said that there were seven deaths in one year alone, so if there is a curse, it's clearly a pretty strong one. It's 
almost as if disturbing a man who's been in the same spot for 53 centuries wasn't the best idea that anyone's ever had. In our number five spot today, we have Europa. We are going off planet for this one. One of Jupiter's moons called Europa has a red tinge to it. And in 2001, NASA scientists revealed that it's possible that alien microbes might be responsible for this red color. The surface of this moon is mostly ice, but it has been shown that it reflects infrared radiation in a really bizarre way. This means that something is binding it together, but researchers haven't been able to come up with the correct combination of elements and compounds to make the data make sense. There are some bacteria on Earth that can thrive in extreme conditions that also have that red and brown color which could potentially be responsible for the color on this moon. The surface temperature might be too cold for them to survive, but the warmer interior might be where they are located. Some geological activity on the moon could then push them closer to the surface where they are then flash frozen in place. In our number 4 spot today we have P38. In 2018, a team of researchers were using a drone with ground penetrating radar technology when they found something that no one could have predicted. 300 feet deep in the Greenland ground encased in ice was a World War II plane. This P-38 Lightning Fighter plane is actually just one out of eight that were a squadron. This P-38 Lightning Fighter plane was actually just one out of eight that were part of a squadron. This group had all been lost and had crash landings after a blizzard on July 15th, 1942. After locating the fighter plane, researchers were able to then excavate it, but there still remains at least four in this squadron that have yet to be located. In our number three spot today, we have Skeleton Lake. Also sometimes referred to as Mystery Lake, this place is exactly what it sounds like. It's a lake and there's a bunch of skeletons there. Located in the Himalayas, this lake freezes over in the winter months, but when the snow melts, there are various skeletons around the site that become visible around the edges of the lake. There have been many speculations as to how these people died, and at one point it was thought that these remains were a result of a pretty legendary event where all in a single group, they were killed by a large and violent hailstorm, but the leading theory has since changed. Now it is said that the remains actually belong to three distinctly different groups who all died in separate events. At this point, the real story of what happened here may just remain a mystery that has left us with a haunting image. In our number two spot today, we have Luba. This is the name that was given to a baby mammoth. Mummified remains were found frozen and extremely well preserved in ice. Luba would have roamed the earth about 48,000 years ago, which is truly incredible to think about. These mammoth remains were found in 2007, but it was actually a complete accident. The remains were found by a hunter who was out on a frozen peninsula in Russia. But here's where the story takes a bit of a crazy turn. So the man who discovered these remains didn't want to touch her because of a cultural belief that touching a mammoth would cause a bad omen, so he traveled to a nearby town to consult a friend, and this is when they decided to contact the authorities. The authorities then flew out to the area to collect the remains, but when they arrived, she had disappeared. The person who found her knew that someone had likely taken her to try and turn a profit, so he began doing some investigations. Long story short, they found the remains outside of a local store, and this is when it was revealed to them that the guy who had found the remains initially, his cousin had stolen them and brought them here in exchange for two snowmobiles. In the end, there was unfortunately minor damage to the body that included dogs having chewed off her right ear, but still the find and discovery was still incredible and she was transported to a museum where she continues to give people a look into a time on Earth long ago. In our number one spot today, we have the Incan mummy. 20,000 feet above sea level on the edge of a volcano, researchers were startled to find a woman frozen in ice. This Incan mummy is said to have been so well preserved that she even still had lice in her hair. The researchers and doctors who examined her after her discovery were completely baffled at how well preserved she was, so much so that some of her features reminded them of a living, breathing human being. Even down to the extremities, it truly was just remarkable. It is believed that this woman likely met her fate where she was found as a result of sacrifice. Because of her well-preserved nature, scientists were able to determine that she was suffering from quite a few ailments, including tuberculosis, which some believe is the reason why she was sacrificed. Starting off this countdown, we have the UFOs. There are tons of urban legends surrounding Antarctica. In particular, it's thought that aliens once lived there after crashing into one of the mountains. From there, it's believed that they had their own secret base there. While in 2019, UFO hunter Scott Waring was on Google Maps looking at Antarctica from above when he spotted what he thought to be a UFO trapped under Antarctica's ice. According to Scott, he was looking over an island in Antarctica when he saw the craft. He said it was triangular in shape 
has a hump in the middle, and it has a thicker edge. He believes that with global warming melting more and more of Antarctica, that the craft, which was once lodged in the ice, is slowly starting to reveal itself. But of course, no one has actually gone out to that spot to investigate what it might be. So it could just be ice, or it could be a real alien spacecraft. Now, I'm just a little concerned when that thing fully thaws. Like, I don't need no aliens coming back to life. No, thank you. In our ninth spot, we have the Loch Ness Monster. And if you guys are liking this video so far, then make sure to give it a big thumbs up because you know what? It really helps us out. A couple of years ago, another man was on Google Maps when he saw what looked to be a big monster lurking in the water. It was this massive dark mass that had a lot of people terrified. But later it was debunked saying that it was just a bunch of rocks. But did you know that a real life Loch Ness monster did once roam Antarctica? Yeah, over the course of a number of expeditions, scientists have discovered fossilized remains of a massive creature. And they say it's unlike anything they have ever seen. These remains are over 70 million years old and are from a creature that would have weighed about 15 tons. Not only that, but this thing was massive. It was 36 feet long. Now, it's considered to be part of the Elasmosaurid family, but this thing is the largest of its kind ever found. In our eighth spot, we have the Blood Falls. Now, if you're visiting Antarctica, this for sure would give you a heart attack. So they have something they refer to as the Blood Falls. There's a place where it literally looks like it's gushing out blood. It's like when the elevator doors open in The Shining and then like all that blood just gushed out. Yeah, that's what it looks like. So this was discovered back in 1911 by an Australian geologist. But don't worry, it's not actually blood. At first, it was thought that it was a result of microscopic red algae. But in 2003, it was actually discovered that the color was a result of oxidized iron. Nonetheless, it looks very creepy. In fact, I've seen this image circling around the web before and people are using it as a PSA of like, all the animals that have died in the Arctic and that's their blood. Clearly, it's false, but again, a very creepy image. Moving on to number seven, we have the creatures. Antarctica is home to a number of very creepy looking creatures. It was previously thought that because of its harsh conditions, nothing could survive there. But scientists have discovered a number of weird species that have adapted to survive in the environment. First off, let's talk about the sea spider. Now, Antarctica isn't the only place that has these creatures. But naturally, the sea spiders in Antarctica are massive. In Europe, these spiders are about the size of your fingernail. In Antarctica, they're the size of a large dinner plate. Now, technically, they aren't actually spiders, even though they have eight legs. They belong to a class of species called pycnogonids instead of arachnids. Seriously, these creatures are terrifying looking. It's like a mixture of a crab and a spider. And those legs are super long. What's super weird about them is that they pump blood with their guts. This is the first time that this kind of circulatory system has been seen in nature. And they breathe through their skin, which actually allows more oxygen to be absorbed into their bodies, which allows them in turn to grow bigger over time. How great. Coming in at number six, we have the plane crash. In the 1970s, Antarctica, for some reason, was the place to travel to. Tons of tourists from New Zealand were booking day trips to Antarctica. However, one of these trips ended very badly. Due to low visibility, the plane crashed at the side of Mount Erubus. To this day, remnants of the crash are still there on the mountain. As for the passengers on board, well, their bodies were removed and stored at an American base on Ross Island. Many visitors to this day believe that this site is haunted by the ghosts of the passengers who died in the crash. People have heard eerie voices, felt ghostly presences, and have discovered unexplained footprints. One of the workers at the station experienced this all himself and is convinced it's haunted. So yeah, there's ghosts in Antarctica. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the ghost towns. Believe it or not, but Antarctica is filled with ghost towns. This is from humans trying to live there, but ultimately finding the weather conditions to be way too harsh, and then they end up just leaving. And they leave everything behind. As a result, there are tons of abandoned buildings and structures all over Antarctica, from military bases to research stations to huts. 
you get the picture. Back in the early 2000s, however, a team of scientists went to Antarctica and found something very disturbing. While exploring some of the abandoned buildings, they found several frozen bodies. Most likely, these people weren't properly equipped for the cold. But still, that must have been a horrifying find. In our fourth spot, we have the bristle worm. Okay, if you thought the sea spiders were bad, wait until you hear about this bad boy. This is something straight out of your nightmares. Basically, it's a worm-type creature with bristles, hence the name bristle worm. Its nasty looking bristles help it crawl along the ocean floor and swim and also to protect itself. This creature also has pretty sharp teeth and it's a carnivore. So, you know, there's that. Oh, and it extends its jaws to catch its prey. It gets worse. This thing is huge. It can grow to more than 20 centimeters long and 10 centimeters wide. No, thank you. No, that's just, no. And the part of the creature that looks like it would be its head? No, that's its throat. I know, I'm grossed out too. And at number three, we have the penguin mummies. I mean like ancient Egypt mummies, not like the penguin's mom. So in 2016, a group of scientists discovered hundreds of mummified penguins in Antarctica. Since Antarctica has little precipitation and is dry and cold, it can mummify animals much like a desert would. In fact, it's still considered a desert even though it's cold. Well, anyway, scientists found a large amount of mummified penguins, many of which were just chicks. Some of the birds were from 200 years ago, others were from 750 years ago, all still perfectly preserved. It's thought that these birds died because of global warming. The weather drastically changed on these animals and it caused them to slowly die. Nonetheless, it must have been pretty creepy to arrive there only to find a graveyard of mummies. In our second spot, we have the monument. In 2009, a bunch of scientists in Antarctica discovered something rather strange. It was a monument with a bust of Vladimir Lenin on top, the former premier of the Soviet Union. After digging around the half-buried monument, they discovered an old Soviet Union military base, which by then was covered completely in snow. Had it not been for the monument sticking out, they probably would have never found it. Here's where it gets strange. After they unearthed this monument, the men began to become haunted by Lenin's ghost. And other explorers have claimed to have seen a ghostly apparition in that area, and they claim it looks exactly like him. Freaky, I know. Sometimes what's buried is sometimes better left buried. And in our number one spot, we have the ghost ship. Back in 1823, a boat named the Jenny left port on an exploration. However, along the way, something went wrong and it seems like the men aboard starved and then froze to death. The boat then got trapped in the ice in Antarctica. Several years later, a crew passing by noticed the ship and decided to climb aboard to see what's up. There they found the entire crew frozen to death, perfectly preserved. One of the last journal entries from the captain read, May 4th, 1823. No food for 71 days. I am the only one left alive. That is so creepy. Number 10, sand hoppers. Sand hopping in Antarctica? Get out of town. A sand hopper sounds like something from the movie Dune. These amphipod crustaceans can be found more often than not near shores, but also in the deepest, darkest depths of the ocean. They eat decaying or dead material. I mean, just, just by looking at them, you can tell that they eat leftovers. They're around one meter long to a few inches long. They're tiny little buggy dudes. They're pretty unique as well. When we think of the bottom of the food chain, we don't connect beauty with them a lot, right? These sand Sand hoppers can come in many different shapes, sizes, and even colors. Some are pale, some are camouflage, some are bright red. They're all unique New Yorks. Look at them go. Number nine, ice fish. Fish that are icy. Yes, here we go. Now we're back on track. This makes much more sense for Antarctica. Ice fish didn't get their name because they live in a place full of ice. They literally are the most cold-blooded creature on the planet. As aside from your ex, of course. They can adapt their body temperature to the water and stay cold. They stay frosty, my friends. If they encounter warm water, God forbid, well, they simply won't survive. It's chilly waters or bust for ice fish. If you're wondering how they swim around without literally freezing solid, it's because, well, similarly, 
separately to the fish that we had on part one, these two create glycoproteins, which is a natural antifreeze, if you will. That's why they don't have chunks of ice hanging off of them, just weighing them down all day. They have a natural antifreeze, but no hemoglobin, so their blood is white. So underwater, they just look like nothing, really. Invisible ice fish. Yeah, this place is wild. Number eight, narwhals. The unicorn of the sea. Are these things real? I have never seen one before. But to be fair, I don't spend a lot of time in Arctic waters, so. That makes sense. My last name has waters in it, but I don't really like the water, you know? Nor do I have a horn growing out of my head, so I don't belong anywhere near these guys. Narwhals can grow up to 17 feet in length. Their horn is mighty, tusk rather, their one single head tusk. I like saying horn because it's majestic. It reminds you of unicorns, right? And narwhals are majestic. More often than not, males will grow the tusk, and female narwhals have these tiny little tusks. Scientists still can't explain the reason behind a narwhal's tusk in the first place. Why is it used? I mean, so far we believe it's to impress females. Females. That's our main guess. Or hunt other males. Yeah, we got narwhals jesting in the ocean for love. A lot happening over in the uh, Arctic. Number seven, walrus. Yeah, since we're on the topic of tusks, why not? These guys are also pretty bizarre when you really think about it. They have massive tusks coming out of their face. And I recently watched that horror movie with Justin Long called Tusk, and now I can't look at a walrus ever again the same. Duh. These arctic creatures have some odd patterns. Their abilities are also extremely underrated. Their tusks can reach three feet and they use them to hoist themselves out of the water. Yeah, they bite into the ice and then pull their fat bodies out. I can't even bite ice cream. Imagine using your teeth to get out of the ocean. Ugh, that's athletic, man. Walrus can also slow their heart rate down in order to save energy. That's also pretty neat. They have fantastic abilities to adapt, but humans, we almost sent these beautiful creatures into extinction. Classic, classic humans just getting involved, wanting to take a look. Walrus hunting is now illegal for the most part, aside from a few areas. So these blubbery boys still have a fighting chance. But historically, a walrus have never attacked a human ever. So don't be afraid of them. They don't want any beef, just fish. Number six, snailfish. Another fish, another fun fact. There's around 400 types of snailfish in the frigid depths of the Arctic. The frigid depths of the Arctic. Why did I write, I write myself tongue twisters. Now, of course, there are many that haven't even been discovered yet, which is always fun. Thankfully, we have researchers take on these daring expeditions, like the secrets of Antarctica, for example. This documentary is breathtaking, and it's on YouTube for free. It was released back in 2019 on Track's official page. In this documentary, scientist Andrew Stewart finds a new species of snailfish. Yeah, spoiler alert, but had to include it. Now you want to take a look. He said the discovery is beyond words. Yeah, more than fair. Look at this thing. I wouldn't know what to say. He's a squishy tadpole looking rubbery fish. He looks quite sad. And to be fair, when you live 700 meters below in freezing cold water and you don't have much company, yeah, that's... I'd be sad too. That is until Andrew Stewart came along and introduced you to the rest of the world. Now we know what this thing is. Massive eyes, unique color patterns. Not everything down there is terrifying. Just most things, I guess. Number five, Feather Star. Scientific name is Promacochnerus gurgulenus. That's, uh, I tried 17 other times, but we had to cut it out, so that's the best I could do. We'll call it Feather Star. Feather Star is a little bit easier today. And dare I say, that name is quite fitting. Look at him go! He's like a mop head with feelings. He is on a mission. The Feather Star was discovered during the Challenger expedition way back in the early 70s. They're too fast. I mean, like, they're not fast, but they can really move around for what they are. Five centimeters per second. That's, that's pretty fast for an ice-cold crinoid. There's three main parts to this fantastic brain. Brush. There's the stem, the calyx, and the arms. Now these guys, they self-repair their body parts, which is just insane to me. They'll just yank off one of their arms and just grow a whole new one, like it's no problem. They trap prey. Well, rather, they trap any food particles that float on by. They use their long feathery arms and their natural sticky mucus to catch food and then cycle it through their body. Feather stars reproduce every 10 to 16 months. I have my hands up, like I want to be a feather star. I don't know why I'm doing this. Hi, like RuPaul. Feather stars reproduce every 10 to 16 months, but it's tricky. Male and female sea stars live in different habitats, right? Different sides of the gymnasium during that first dance, right? They have to kind of get close. They're on opposite ends here. So mating season really has to go swimmingly or else their population is literally at stake. Hope they get along. Number four, groller bear. Yeah, I said groller bear instead of polar bear. What about it? Let's talk. Does this bear do roller derby? Is that where it gets its name from? What's going on? Back in 2006, a Canadian hunter found a hybrid bear. They called it a pizzly bear or a groller bear. You get what I'm doing here. Because it looks like a mix of the two, but it actually was a hybrid. Yeah, tests were later conducted in 2010 after more appeared in Alaska and Northern Canada. Historically, polar bears branched off of grizzlies, you know, like DNA wise way back. Now we're at a point where Arctic areas are warming up and these two species are both traveling further away to find food. So now these two branches are starting to merge back together and in turn we get a groller bear. 
which is just fun to say, a gruller bear. Number three, Arctic octopus. I watched my octopus teacher last week with Olivia and uh, we both bawled our eyes out. That was a great fun time, that was good, that was a nice date. I didn't know I could get so attached to an octopus. These little guys are fascinating, they dream, they use shells, as tools and like shields, they can camouflage, they have nine brains, eight arms, three hearts, and hundreds of suckers, and one life. I don't know why I added that at the end. I didn't even add that, I was like, oh, we need a one here for this list. Antarctic octopus survive in sub-zero temperatures by using a blue pigment in their blood. They use a natural protein called hemokyanin. They oxygenate their bodies and they adapt to harsh environments, and most importantly, they're really cute. Yeah, look at this little guy. Their appendages are all tight. It keeps it warm and keeps it cozy. That's great. Little arms. Oh, I can't even look at him. He's so cute. Get him out of here. Get that guy out of here. I want to poke him. Number two, basket stars. This next one here is truly a basket case. The basket star, scientific name Gorganocephalus, sounds like a Harry Potter villain, does not look like any type of sea star that we've seen before. Basket stars are brittle stars. They can crawl with these lanky, long appendages. I mean, I would definitely know. This one here was found at 500 meters below sea level. Just walk walking around like haunted hay, just taking its time, just drifting along. It could also feed by floating along the surface of the water, so next time you take an ice cold dip, watch out you don't run into one of these. Keep your mouth shut when you're swimming. Or you should get one of these brittle, fuzzy things in your mouth, gross. And coming in at number one, pile of bones. Look, I know this isn't a creature per se, but it's too interesting to leave out. Antarctica is another planet. That place looks like Hoth sometimes, especially in 2016. A team of researchers were working on James Ross Island and they stumbled across 70 million year old fossils. Yeah, what a find. Ancient sea creatures, ancestors of ducks, this thing was a loaded pierogi of history. Researchers have also recently found that 75 million years ago, wildfires were once ripping through Antarctica. How wild is that? Dinosaurs and wildfires. Yeah, a little different than today's Antarctica. Just a, just a tad. Most ancient wildfire evidence has been found in the Northern Hemisphere. So to find the burnt remains of coniferous trees, like charcoal fragments in Antarctica, it reminds us that once upon a time, Antarctica was once fresh when it separated from God it was isolated, it was ice free, most importantly, and it was full of volcanic activity and high oxygen. Tectonic plates were running wild during the Cretaceous period. This was a wild, wild time. Antarctica sure is barren now, but oh boy. Are we lucky that's the case? Scary dinosaurs and fires. No, no, thank you. Number 10, dinosaur. When it comes to big things, dinosaurs were pretty damn big. Scientists were able to uncover the fossilized remains of a new and unknown species of dinosaur underneath the ice sheets in Greenland. When the dinosaurs were alive, the earth was a lot warmer and more tropical, these fossils becoming trapped under the ice when the climate changed into the ice age. The skull they found is thought to be a two-legged plant-eating dinosaur of medium size, and they dubbed the new species Issy Sinique. The dinosaur is believed to have grown to the size of 10 to 30 feet, and the skull they found is thought to be that of a younger dinosaur that had not fully grown yet. They used computer technology to create 3D scans of the head before sending the specimens to the Natural History Museum in Denmark as they have sovereignty over the country of Greenland. It is the first known dinosaur to have been native to Greenland and is thought to come from the late Triassic period around 200 million years ago. Number 9. Bison the massive carcass of a bison known as a steppe bison was found by a gold mining family in Alaska way back in 1979. They were using a mining hose and were melting a frozen block of ice, effectively thawing out the creature that had become trapped inside. The bison species is from the ice age and the body that they found is thought to be tens of thousands of years old. Once they were finally able to fully excavate the body, they found other things alongside it, including hair, insects, wood, and different plants. When the pelt of the animal reacted to the soil around it, it turned the body blue, and so the bison ended up being dubbed Blue Babe. Analysis of the body showed it had died 36,000 years ago, a result of being attacked by an Ice Age lion. The ice allowed the creature to be incredibly well preserved, scientists even being able to find pockets of blood in the body. Number 8. Cave Bear This specimen found on an island in the Arctic was a very unique discovery, said to be one of the first of its kind. Researchers found a well-preserved body of a cave bear that was around 40,000 years old. 
Cave bears would grow to be around 7 feet long and typically weighed over 1,000 pounds in their adulthood. Before this discovery was made, they only knew about the animal from skulls and bones, and had never found a specimen that was this fully preserved. The body that they found had all of its organs still, and even still had its nose on its face, paired with its terrifyingly massive sharp teeth. According to one of Russia's leading Ice Age experts, the discovery of the body was of world importance and is the first and only find of its kind. The body was found by a group of reindeer herders on the island and was then sent around to various scientists to study the life of the animal. Number 7. Horned Lark Alright, some of these creatures aren't that big, but they're still pretty interesting, and pff, size doesn't matter anyways. In 2018, fossil hunters were in the northeastern part of Siberia, known as the Pole of Cold, and they were tunneling into the permafrost. Deep underground, they discovered the body of a bird thought to be around 46,000 years old, but it was incredibly well preserved and scientists say that it looks like it could have only died a few days ago. Researchers believe that it is the ancestor of the horned lark bird and is the first of its kind to have ever been discovered. It is also said to be one of the best preserved specimens ever discovered as it was almost completely intact and still had all of its parts. The ice age that took place is thought to have generated many new species who adapted, and this is one of them. Siberia is home to a lot of frozen discoveries due to its freezing cold temperatures, and who knows what else is sitting in the ice, just waiting to be found. Number 6. Wolf the Pleistocene era, or Ice Age, lasted from about 2 million to 11,000 years ago, and many great extinct creatures we've discovered come from this era. One of these discoveries was the head of a massive Ice Age era wolf that was still snarling 40,000 years after it had died. It was found in a cold region of Russia and is one of the first full sized frozen wolves ever to be discovered. They found it in the summer of 2018 and it was described as having mammoth like fur, sharp fangs, and was between the ages of 2 and 4 when it passed away. Because only the head was discovered, it only gave small clues towards the evolution of wolves and how they have changed and adapted over the years, but researchers were still able to reconstruct the head using 3D models and get a solid understanding of what these Ice Age wolves looked like. In fact, the specimen was so well preserved that it even still had parts of its brain. Number 5. Lion Cubs as I've mentioned before, Siberia is a place that is fairly popular for finding frozen specimens, and this time they didn't just find one animal, but instead two matching ones. They found two mummified cave lions that lived during the Ice Age around 30,000 years ago, giving them the names Sparta and Boris. They were found in 2017 and 2018 by mammoth tusk collectors, and one of the cubs was believed at the time to be the best preserved Ice Age animal ever found. It was originally thought that the two cubs they discovered were siblings, being only a few months old at the time of their death, but research showed that Boris had actually died about 15,000 years before Sparta. Sparta still had her fur, teeth, skin, organs, and even her whiskers, looking like she may have only recently died despite being a part of a species that went extinct over 10,000 years ago. If given the chance to grow up, the cubs would have managed to grow to 5 feet long and weigh almost a thousand pounds. Number 4. Sharks Creatures that are found frozen in ice don't always actually come from the Ice Age. There are plenty of cold places right now where animals can unfortunately become trapped, or pass away and then freeze. In Cape Cod, Massachusetts, it has become startlingly common for giant sharks to become frozen in the ice off the coast. A few years ago, they found a total of four different sharks that had all become frozen in the ice and passed away. The sharks were apparently becoming trapped in shallow waters during changing weather conditions, and sudden cold snaps would cause them to freeze and die. The thresher sharks that were commonly becoming trapped were apparently not a very well studied species, so the bodies that were found were taken and thawed in order to be dissected and researched. The Atlantic White Shark Conservancy even went so far to refer to the specimens as sharksicles, but probably not something you'd want to eat on a hot day in the summer. Number 3. Mummies 
Human remains are usually found when archaeologists dig up large graves and find skeletons, but in a rare case they managed to find the well preserved and mummified body of a woman. A group of hikers exploring an Argentinian volcano found the body of a woman who appeared to have died around 500 years ago. The body was well preserved due to the incredibly high and cold elevation at which it was found. It's believed that the body was there as part of an ancient sacrificial ritual, and the woman, named the Inca Ice Maiden, was sacrificed. She was given lots of food and drink before being led up the volcano where she was left to die of exposure. The discovery of her body was also incredibly important because from samples they took, they were able to discover that she was fighting tuberculosis, and these sorts of samples can help us work towards fighting these diseases in the modern day. Number 2. Full in the summer of 2018, they found what they called the best preserved ice age animal ever found. Feels like they say that a lot. Anyways, mammoth tusk hunters in Siberia found the body of an around 42,000 year old horse foal, incredibly well preserved thanks to the cold temperatures. They say that it was only about two weeks old at the time of its death and they were able to extract both blood and urine samples from it. The discovery apparently pushed scientists closer to the hope that they could bring these extinct creatures like mammoths back to life. I think we should listen to Jurassic Park's warnings and just deal with the animals we actually have right now. I know you might be thinking that a baby horse isn't some terrifying giant ice age creature, but full grown horses are pretty big, okay, and they're actually kind of terrifying. I mean they basically walk on one giant finger. It's creepy and I don't like it. Number 1. Baby Mammoth During the Ice Age, mammoths were one of the biggest creatures around, basically being massive furry elephants. This young woolly mammoth specimen was found in, you guessed it, Siberia. This incredibly well preserved body of a young female woolly mammoth named Yuka is said to have lived around 28,000 years ago and they were discovered around a decade ago. Due to her good condition, scientists were eager to conduct experiments and one of those was taking cells from her body. When they put the cells together, they found that they were still active, even almost 30,000 years later, so they managed to technically revive Yuka in a way. At full size, woolly mammoths were usually around 13 feet tall and would weigh around 13,000 pounds, or the same as around 26,000 large oranges if that helps you picture it. Number 10. Hidden Lakes so it took working at a champagne restaurant to find out that salt water doesn't freeze. We Well it does, but at very very low temperatures. We used to use it to hyper chill wine that was in storage because salty water can get colder than 0 degrees celsius without freezing. The saltier the water, the colder it gets because salt lowers the freezing point because it interferes with the water molecules ability to form crystals. Which is at least one reason why deep lake in antarctica has stayed liquid for millions of years. It sits 55 meters below the sea level and the salinity of the water increases as it gets deeper. Despite temperatures reaching minus 20 degrees celsius, the lake remains in a liquid state, though entirely uninhabitable, or so they thought. Scientists have covered at least 4 microbe species living in the water, but that's about the only thing that can. Because the water can reach much colder temperatures than the sea, even penguins wouldn't survive for long. They have been caught swimming in it, but it would feel to them what it feels like for us jumping into an icy lake for a polar dip. You know, if they stay too long, it would probably kill them. How the lake forms exactly still has scientists baffled but they're probably but but let's be honest they'll they'll probably figure it out <laughs> number nine rainforests press rewind on the world for long enough and you would arrive in a world of opposites which includes antarctica being closer to a rainforest than an icy tundra scientists gathered that before antarctica was an expanse of ice the region may have been host to lush forests diverse wildlife and even early human civilizations but why do they think that scientists began discovering fossilized wood leaf impressions and signs of tropical trees on top of that they have found tons of fossils of marine animals, dinosaurs, and birds from the Cretaceous period, so you can see how they deduced the existence of some kind of forest like area. Scientists are now looking to Antarctica for clues about evolution that we may have missed. So far, they have discovered a 50 million year old sperm cell on the egg case of a long extinct worm species, which is extraordinary if you think about it. Man, like, talk about resilience, buddy. <laughs> buddy. Number eight. Mountains. 
Imagine the ice melts away, and beneath those massive, vast sheets of ice is an entire mountain range. Well, guess what? You don't have to imagine it, it's real. Hiding out beneath a two to four kilometer thick sheet of ice are what's called the Gamberts of Mountains. They stretch across 1,200 kilometers and rise about a third of the height of Mount Everest. But how did an entire mountain range that high get covered in a sheet of ice? When Soviet geophysicist Grigory A. Gambert made the discovery in 1958, he had the same question. Though he hasn't actually seen the mountains, covered by ice, remember? But was able to figure out that they were there by measuring the abnormal gravity fluctuations in the area. They have since used radars to interpret the physical attributes of the mountains, but how did they end up that far beneath the ice? The mountains are around a billion years old, and scientists figure they should have eroded away by now. But the most popular theory as to why they are still there is that the erosion process just paused as soon as the ice sheet got large enough. To picture how immense this is, just imagine that the Rocky Mountains are covered by a sheet of ice. Astounding. Number seven, dangerous bacteria. Have you ever heard of Pandora's box? Well, it may surprise you to learn that Antarctica might very well just be that. Scientists have discovered microbes beneath Antarctic ice that could threaten life on planet Earth. Maybe. Ice is an excellent preservation method, and the 420,000 year old microbes may only need to melt in order to come back to life. Now, it is equally likely that these microbes could be entirely harmless, but there is a chance that they won't be. But the fact that it could be so dangerous has scientists keeping tabs on them as closely as possible. Still, it sounds like a Stephen King apocalyptic horror film waiting to happen, so who the heck knows? <laughs> we didn't see the past two years happening, did we? Number six, Blood Falls. Blood falls. Get your mind out of the gutter. Sounds pretty terrifying, as it would have been for the person who first discovered it. In the McMurdo Dry Valley, there is a bright crimson river that cuts between Taylor Glacier and Lake Bonnie. It looks like someone went to town on their dinner and just let the bodies drain into the water. But thank goodness there is a scientific explanation. Beneath the glacier, there is a very briny lake that was cut off from the atmosphere and is three times as salty as seawater, meaning, as we know now, that it can't really freeze, but it can, I guess, at a very low level. At first, it was suspected that a kind of red algae had infiltrated the glacier, causing the vibrant red hue, but in actuality, the briny lake is incredibly high in iron, and since it was cut off from oxygen for millions of years, the red color is a product of the reaction the water has to the oxygen and the sunlight from the atmosphere. The iron in the water oxidizes and rusts, like your car, which brings out the vibrant red illusion that is blood falls. Number five, ancient meteorites. You may think meteorites and asteroids are dangerous, but something far less obvious may cause more damage than a doom rock. 430,000 years ago, smack dab in the middle of the Pleistocene epoch, a massive space rock the size of a soccer field crashed through Earth's atmosphere, but instead of smashing into the Earth, an air burst happened. Just before it slammed into the ice, it burst into pieces exploding in the sky and launched a superheated jet of gas. The explosion the explosion caused massive amounts of damage, scattering pieces of itself everywhere, which is how scientists were able to deduce that this happened. They found pieces of the asteroid across the ice and used chemical clues to link the particles together. They were also able to determine that the force of the blast was about, get ready, a thousand times stronger than the nuclear blast at Hiroshima, and that destroyed an entire city. So. And, and some, so imagine what would have happened if that happened today. Number four, oil guzzling fungi. So we mentioned that there might be a world ending microbes beneath the ice, but there also could be something that saves it. A unique kind of fungi has been found beneath the ice gorging on petroleum. What on earth could that possibly be used for, you ask? Well, if these fun little guys, if these fun little guys love eating oil so much, then imagine how happy they'd be to dive into, let's say, an oil spill. They were first encountered when scientists came upon fuel containers left by explorers and immediately began studying them. Fungi don't usually just flourish at parties, they flourish in warm wooded regions, but perhaps the fungus that used to thrive in the rainforest we mentioned, they evolved to thrive in the icy bearing conditions as well. So cool. We could learn so much about evolution that way. Number three, top three. Singing ice. Yup, the ice is singing. After scientists installed seismic sensors in the ice to measure its behavior, they discovered a mysterious song. Well, more like a massive ice drum. And it sounds like this. The pitch 
changes based on the weather, though you wouldn't be able to hear it should you just stand on it. It's not audible to the human ear. But the humming occurs on the 500,000 square kilometer on the Ross Ice Shelf, about the size of France. The winds blowing across the snow dunes is what causes the humming, and scientists figure that this could be an even better way to keep tabs on how the ice is doing in relation to global warming. The ice is thinning due to global warming, and the song is almost a gift, an easier way to track the stability and vulnerability of the ice shelf. Sounds like nature is working with us to save itself. Number two, cosmic particles. A mystery capable of breaking physics. If that were possible, it would be found in Antarctica. Since March 2016, researchers have been furrowing their brows over two distinct events that shouldn't have happened. Physicists caught cosmic rays that burst out from the Earth, not from space. The rays were detected by ANITA, NASA's Antarctic Impulsive Transient Antenna, a balloon-borne antenna. The balloon is designed to find cosmic rays from outer space, and caused a lot of excitement when it caught them coming up from the Earth instead. The discovery even implied theories that could support parallel universes. What boggles scientists about this discovery is that two particles seem to be cosmic rays that blasted through the planet and back out the other side. They shouldn't be able to do that. They now suspect that they may be particles that defy the standard model of how particles are supposed to behave and maybe they're a new type of particle altogether. This is obviously a very simplistic explanation. It gets a lot more complicated and there's still more information out there, but still, really, really cool. And last but not least, a hidden German base. There are several versions of this story, some even going so far as theorizing that World War II mustache man escaped there and didn't die in his bunker. Some theories even say that German intelligence encountered aliens and developed new weapons with their tech. But the one truth is that there was indeed a secret World War II German base in Antarctica. Apparently there was an expedition to establish a base as a whaling station in order to increase Germany's production of fat, which could be used for soap and mayonnaise and butter. The expedition was led by Alfred Richter and other theories suggest Adolf himself sent the expeditions to research ways Germany could become a self-supporting country. Perhaps the reason was that innocent, but with the base having been abandoned 70 years ago, we will never know. Kicking off the list at number 10, sea pigs. This list gets creepy and or crawly, but first we gotta ease into the Arctic Ocean. We gotta start off this haunting list with the sea pig. Look at this little guy, okay, the pug of the ocean. He looks like a stress ball with feelings. What's going on with him? They look like something that would be microscopic, but really they're six inches long wide, around, big, I don't know, they're pretty large. They stick together, and I mean that in a literal sense. Sea pigs will travel in large gatherings. They live in the deepest, darkest depths of the ocean, so they're hard to find, really. Their mating routine is also still a mystery. We have no idea how they do it. And just by looking at them, we're like, no guesses, certainly no guesses from me. All we know is that they travel in groups, so. I don't know. Sounds like it's a good time, at least. Lifespan and mating life, total mystery. All we know is that they eat decaying matter on the ocean floor. Kudos to the crew over at Ambari. The footage they find of these deep sea creatures is always fascinating. It's always so otherworldly over at Ambari. Are you guys hiring? I'm afraid of the ocean, but you know, I'll do some behind the scenes stuff, who knows. I'll just edit the weird fish. I'll put the text in. Like, what the f is this? Ooh. Number nine, rock bottom. A little over a year ago, scientists camped out in the middle of the Filchner Ron ice shelf for nearly three months. Why? All in the name of science. Yeah, we're getting cold. Geologist James Smith from the British Antarctic Survey slept in a tent. Who does this? Why do you choose to do this? James Smith, apparently. Here we go. He flew five hours out to this ice shelf. Him and his team had to melt 20 tons of snow in order to pour hot water through this ice shelf for 30 hours straight. When the team lowered their gear down through this 3,000 feet of Ice, they couldn't get a sample of sediment from the ocean floor because they hit a boulder. I mean, the odds here alone, I mean, the entire seafloor is basically flat and they end up hitting this thing. At first, they were frustrated, but this boulder that is 160 miles away from daylight is home to microbial malts, these alien like sponges. These cylindrical sponges, possibly hydroids. I love seeing scientists get jazzed about stuff. They're like, oh, this rock had absolutely no business being here. Like, guy, you just melted through ice for 20 hours in the middle of Antarctica. I, I I feel like it's the other way around. Imagine if those sea sponges could talk. They're like, oh, of all the spots, really? Please close that. The first shred of light and it's just a big GoPro coming at them. 
They're like, what is that? Number eight, emperor penguins. They're as glorious as their name hints towards. I remember watching Happy Feet a lot growing up. I was really into penguins and tap dancing for a hot minute there. That movie changed the game. The main penguins here, they're all emperor penguins. Robin Williams' character, Lovelace, he's a rock hopper penguin with the cool, you know, the fluffy eyebrows. The other guys are all emperor penguins. The colorful orange necks, the OG characters, they're all beautiful. They're the largest penguins on the planet and their breeding habits set them aside from the rest. Once the female lays an egg, I'm not gonna do sound effects for this whole process. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> That's so stupid. Once the female lays an egg, she'll leave it with her mate for an incubation period, but she'll walk over 50 miles to the ocean just to get food. The mate has to fast for around 100 days just waiting for his next meal. Once in the water, these emperor penguins really go for it. They soar. They can dive up to 2,000 feet, which is far deeper than any bird in the animal kingdom. And they can hold their breath for around 20 minutes, which is incredible. The longest I've gotten is three minutes, but I'm coming for you, Mumbles. Number seven, chin strap penguins. Okay, from happy feet to slappy feet. Chinstrap penguins are the most aggressive of the penguin family. They're crazy. These guys are nuts. They're tiny. They have to be aggressive. I mean, look at them. They only grow up to 30 inches in length. They're so tiny, but again, they're so aggressive. They only grow up to 30 inches in length, so they have to be, you know? These ones don't tap dance. They actually crump battle you. Yeah, they embarrass you in front of you and your kin. Chin straps are small and quick because their diet requires them to be. With krill wading 50 miles offshore, chin strap penguins have quite the commute. Their thick skin is also quite literal. Their blubber keeps them warm during these long commutes. As long as no leopard seals show up, their commute is pretty smooth sailing. Number six, the sea spider. Okay, we had a few ha-has with the penguins. Now it's time to get weird. Now we know why we're here. The sea spider, thankfully, is not an actual spider. It just looks like one, kind of like daddy long legs. This is a daddy cold legs. It's a marine anthropod, and the reason it's so haunting to look at is because of polar gigantism. Many species have this. Their climate being so harsh, lack of nutrients, lack of sunlight, Light, friends, family, etc. Scientists believe it's because sea spiders have slowed down their metabolism, so much so they require a small amount of oxygen to survive. So over time, the oxygen around these sea spiders turn them into like Captain America. They just juice them up. They take on way more than they're adapted to. And in turn, we get giant terrifying sea bugs. Nice. Number five, scale worms. Upon first glance, again, scale worms look microscopic. They look like tiny bacteria that are covered in scales. Hairy, weird, gross scales. They're pretty horrifying to look at. These guys are actually eight inches long on average, so they're not tiny at all. This is what they really look like. The Antarctic scale worm is covered with elytra, these natural bristles. But the most distracting feature here has to be its mouth, head, mouth thing, yeah. This part on its mouth can literally fully retract. It can go inside out, yeah. It can suck its own mouth inside of its body, and then when it's time to eat, it pops out and then claws its prey to pieces. Horrible. I saw a video of it, I almost threw up. We went from happy feet to retractable mandibles. Cheers, that's how we do it here on MA. Number four, glass sponges. Antarctic glass sponges. They don't get their name because they're translucent, they get their name because their skeletons contains silica, which is a literal component of glass. How neat is that? Back in 2013, a massive discovery took place. Scientists figured out how these glass sponges grow in size. Well, they figured out that they do grow in general. As our ice shelves slowly disappear, the numbers of glass sponge sightings they increase. They don't hunt down prey at all, obviously. They spend their entire life quite still, just eating the leftovers that happen to drift along their merry way. Their food was so sparse as well, for a long time it was fully believed they couldn't possibly grow. Because what would they possibly eat? The more we learn about glass sponges, the better, because these little guys tell us a lot about climate change. We're like, how is it happening? What's going on? Nothing's happening. We're, they don't talk much. They're really quiet. They don't have mouths or eyes. Number three, the springtail. Also known as the elephants of Antarctica, springtails are hexapods. They're exclusively land animals. Whereas penguins, they sometimes, you know, bop and swim. These guys are only on land. They're tiny as well. They measure up to about a millimeter on average. They look like earwigs almost. Ice earwigs that eat bacteria. Horrible. They got a big old butt too, so you're probably gonna notice if you see one walking by. They live on average one to two years, and they produce glycerol, which helps them, you know, not freeze to death. That always helps. Antarctic springtails live longer than springtails in other parts of the world because the frigid temperatures, again, slows their metabolism down so much they can just survive off basically nothing. They're not immortal, but as far as ice insects go, they're, they're close. They're pretty mighty. Small but mighty. Number two, the Hoff Crab. When these creatures get their names, it's often in relation to their appearance or their super ability. The immortal jellyfish ages in reverse. The glass octopus is otherwise see-through. The Hoff Crab gets its name because it looks hairy, like David Hasselhoff. 
he's hairy as well. Yeah, David Hasselhoff just tweeted the Hoff crab with this photo. So random, imagine following him and you see this, you're like, what's going on, why? We love it. The scientific name later given was Kiwa Tyleri, appropriately named after its discoverer, Paul Tyler, from Southampton University. Found in the East Scotia Ridge on the Southern Ocean, where the water is too cold for the Hoff crab, these guys are just covered in bacteria, hence their hairy Hoff look. Because it spends so much time staying warm near hydrothermal vents on the ocean floor. The guy literally just sits around a deep sea campfire just collecting ice cold bacteria. What a, what a wild life. He's a deep sea hairy caveman, essentially. When it comes time to eat, the Hoff crab just scrapes off a little bit of bacteria from any part and then just gives himself more food. He gives himself a little haircut salad. We love those. And finally coming in number one, the colossal squid. Not to be confused with the giant squid, those are similar but smaller. Still terrifying but more petite. As its name gives away, the colossal squid is much larger. They live in the darkest, coldest depths surrounding the waters of Antarctica, and these squids, on average, they're around 46 feet in length, with the females being the largest of the species. The biggest and baddest, of course. They have large tentacles with suckers equipped with razor hooks, so whatever it does grab, it's certainly not letting go anytime soon. Its diet consists of large fish, and when I say large, I'm referring to, you know, seven foot long Patagonian toothfish, not a goldfish. They're colossal, and they try and fight whales sometimes. They're crazy. They have no regard for the size of others. They're going to fight anything and everyone. They're more often than not marked up, suggesting they've been in a few deep sea tussles. On top of being magnificent, they're quite mysterious. Only two specimens have ever been collected, with the second being recent in 2014. Some believe this is the closest living relative to the Kraken. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Sound off below. Either way, I'm gonna go throw up. I never wanna see any of these in real life. Awesome. Number 10, a giant hole. And by giant, I mean two thirds the area of Manhattan and nearly a thousand feet tall, large enough to have once held 15 billion tons of ice. Beneath the Thwaites Glacier in West Antarctica, there is a gap between the glacier and the bedrock that was discovered only recently by NASA scientists. Much of the void, as they are calling it, is a result of the melting that has occurred over the last few years. According to Eric Rigneau, scientists had suspected that the Thwaites Glacier was not attached to the bedrock beneath it. This void in the ice has helped reveal to researchers how much the ground has shifted between 1992 to 2017 and continues to lead to more discoveries and who knows what's next. Number nine, super seals. I'm very glad that I will never know what it's like to survive in the perilous and unforgiving icy tundra that is Antarctica. Especially since you need to be a super seal to survive there. Weddell seals had researchers perplexed for a while because they have an uncanny ability of knowing where the gaps in the ice are so they can come up for air. Weddell seals can dive down hundreds of meters while hunting and still find their way up to breathing holes with ease. After years of study in 2014, the National Science Foundation announced the apparent cause. They may have a sixth sense and no, it's not that they can see other dead seals. By using the Earth's magnetic field as a natural GPS, these seals are able to find the openings in the ice. Still crazy to me. So not only are they adorable, incredible divers and hunters, they can predict where they need to go in order to survive, which is insane to me. Number eight, glass sponges. No, they aren't actually made of glass, but the reason they are called that is because of the fact that their skeletons contain silica, which is a component of glass. They act as filters and basically pick up any food that passes by and can live for centuries. They don't only grow in Antarctica, but they seem to be playing a very curious role in the area. Ever since ice shells began disappearing due to global warming, the appearance of glass sponges has increased. There seems to be a correlation between the two and scientists are trying to work out what the exact cause is. If they figure it out, they will not only be able to understand the ecology better, but also understand how these creatures store carbon. This could help researchers understand some of the key components behind climate change, so it is definitely a mystery worth solving. Number seven, a perfect rectangle. Now, usually when someone says icebergs, first you think of the Titanic, rest in peace, and two, you might imagine them looking massive and jagged and the whole metaphor of like, there's so much going on beneath. But NASA spotted one that caused a couple furrowed brows. It was perfectly rectangular. This type of iceberg actually has a name and they are called tabular icebergs. They have steep, nearly vertical sides and a flat top. They spotted what was essentially a massive ice sheet cake while doing a routine aerial survey. NASA tweeted the reason for this anomaly and said, the iceberg's sharp angles and flat surface indicate that it probably recently calved from the ice shelf. The rectangular ice sheet itself is so massive that if it were to melt, the amount of water could fill every swimming pool in California several times over. 
crazy. That just goes to show how much water is actually in Antarctica. Number six, a lava lake. And no, I didn't say lava cake, but boy do I wish I did. But it is still surprising that somewhere tucked beneath all of that ice, there is a pool of lava? What? On Saunders Island, there lives one of eight lava lakes found in the world. Scientists from the University College London and the British Antarctic Survey discovered the lake on the island due to thermal imaging from satellite data. They caught images of the volcano of Mount Michel and noticed a lake of lava sitting within its crater around 700 feet in diameter. The temperature reads at around 1,812 to 2,334 degrees Fahrenheit, which is around 989 or 1,279 degrees Celsius. Is, which I guess isn't that surprising because it's lava. It's the hottest thing ever. But despite lava bubbling in volcanoes being a very common image associated with volcanoes, there have actually only been eight ever seen. For the most part, lava dries its rock, which is the case with most of the 1500 volcanoes on the earth. So why, especially in such a cold climate, does this one stay molten? Scientists presume it's due to a combination of gases and steam that kind of lock in the heat, but they need to get a closer look, which could take years. Number five, green icebergs. Actual green, they're jade green. Green icebergs are a weird phenomenon that probably doesn't suit the default image of icebergs in your brain. All the way back to the 18th century, green icebergs have raised many questions and have even had myths built around them. For over 200 years, the mystery of why they happen is finally close to being solved. A research team at the University of Washington believe they have the answer to their unusual hue. Usually icebergs appear white and light blue because of the water, but now Stephen Warren has a new theory and it relates to the same explanation for blood falls from our last video, which by the way, if you haven't watched it, Go do that now. He believes that iron oxides are responsible for changing the color. Iron oxides are the same compound that create red brown rust. When they react to oxygen, the iron oxides change the color of the ice. If this study is proven, this could also explain where phytoplankton get their nutrients from and therefore explain how the whole ecosystem works. So very interesting. Number four, creepy creatures. Researchers from the British Antarctic Survey were investigating the Filkner Rhone ice shelf and were set on getting a sample of the sediment core. While drilling around 900 meters through the shelf, the drill hit a rock. But not only that, the camera attached to the drill caught a wealth of creatures latched onto the rock. Rock. These creatures, who probably haven't seen the light of day for thousands of years, were suddenly there making scientists' jaws drop to the floor. Animals similar to sponges were attached, but this discovery opened up all new ideas about life on Earth. These creatures are supposed to rely on food to drift past in order to survive, but these ones are stationary and they are 1500 kilometers upstream from the closest source of photosynthesis. How are they getting their nutrients and where? Number three, Shackleton's lost ship. Somewhere trapped by mountains of ice is the Endurance. In 1915, Sir Ernest Shackleton along with his crew had to abandon ship when the Endurance slipped beneath the Weddell Sea. The frozen water crushed the hull, so the crew escaped towards South Georgia Island in lifeboats. They traveled 720 nautical miles before they were rescued and left the Endurance where it continues to endure beneath the waves. The idea of recovering the ship has captivated the minds and hearts of seafaring historians and archaeologists for decades. Finally, a UK led expedition attempted to relieve the ship of its glacial prison in 2019. They made a harrowing attempt, but sadly came back with nothing. They sent a submarine to the ocean floor to look for the sunken polar yacht, but sadly, the water took that too. They lost contact with it. One of the expedition members stated, like Shackleton before us, who described the graveyard of endurance as the worst portion of the worst sea in the world, our well laid plans were overcome by the rapidly moving ice and what Shackleton called the evil conditions of the Weddell Sea. Number two, the anomaly. Somewhere beneath the frozen wasteland of Wilkes Land in Antarctica, there is something that could change our entire understanding of history. The area they are most curious about is 151 miles across and dives 2,700 feet deep. The most common hypothesis for what is under there is a massive asteroid, and not the one I previously mentioned that blew up before it hit last video. This asteroid is twice the size of the one that destroyed the dinosaurs. 
If it is indeed beneath the ice, it could be the asteroid that caused the Permian Triassic extinction event, which killed 96% of Earth's sea creatures. Of course, other ideas of what the object could be extend to a massive UFO and even a portal to a mysterious underworld called the Hollow Earth. The reason scientists believe there is something is due to what is called the Wilkes Land Gravity Anomaly, first discovered in 2006. NASA spotted gravitational changes, which indicate an object of immense size. The biggest clue that it is an asteroid is the fact it's sitting in a 300 mile wide crater. So that makes sense. Whether or not you agree is up to you until the day we finally uncover it, but we can all at least agree that something is down there. But what exactly? Who knows? Number one, aliens and Atlantis. Antarctica looks like a secret lying in wait beneath the cold, hard ice and unforgiving mountains. So it's no wonder how year after year dozens of people across the earth report UFO sightings on Google Maps and strange snow patterns belonging to ancient beings. Despite its freezing temperatures, this place is a hot spot for conspiracies and mysteries, including those that believe the lost city of Atlantis is somewhere tucked away. Perhaps the massive unknown object beneath the crater is in fact just that, a lost city. After all, as I mentioned in part one, Antarctica used to be a tropical oasis before it froze over, who and what got left behind? Though it is highly likely that a civilization would have thrived here, scientists still haven't found any proof that one did, let alone anything that points to Atlantis. Just like the ocean, we have barely scratched the surface on what we know about this vast icy tundra and we'll probably never really know. Starting off at number 10 now, we have aliens. Wherever there is a mysterious piece of land, someone will say that aliens have been there. Antarctica is obviously one of those places. One of the more recent claims came in April 2017, when conspiracy theorists claimed to have found evidence of an underwater base off the coast of Antarctica. The 500 meter long object was spotted on Smiley Island. This image was posted to the website for UFO sightings hotspot. The first thing people usually say is that it just kind of looks like an iceberg that split away from the mainland. The UFO sightings website disagrees though. They say the object does not fit in with the normal shapes of usual icebergs. They say that the shapes and forms from this iceberg look very different when compared with icebergs, if that makes sense. They believe that it could actually be a secret UFO vessel in disguise. What do you think? Next up at number 9 now, we have the ice wall. Ah, flat earthers. Don't they always have the best theories? A lot of flat earth critics raised a very fair question of what exactly happens when people sail or fly to the end of the earth and how do we not just, you know, fall off? The Flat Earth Society believes that there is a massive 150 foot ice wall surrounding the coast of Antarctica. Not only is it tall, it's also very thick, several hundreds of of meters thick to be precise. Flat earthers often cite the British explorer James Clark Ross. The British expeditions went to Antarctica in the mid 1800s. In his travel notes, he wrote of an icy wall, saying it was an obstruction of such character as to leave no doubt in my mind as to our future proceedings, for we might as well sail through the cliffs of Dover as to penetrate such a mass. Although, of course, many historians and those who have actually read the full extent of his journals will know that he is talking about an ice shelf, the Ross Ice Shelf that was named after him, although this shelf is just 50 meters high and was 600 kilometers long until it recently broke apart. To end this point about the ice wall, let me read one of my favorite quotes from the Flat Earth Society. Beyond the 150 foot ice wall is anyone's guess. How far the ice extends, how it terminates, and what exists beyond it are questions to which no present human experience can reply. Apart from, you know, I guess humans who study science. Humans with telescopes, humans who have actually been to space, but yeah, forget about them. Moving on to number 8 now, we have Atlantis. For centuries, people have been searching for Atlantis, the lost island that Plato wrote about in the Republic. It was the home of the Atlanteans, a technologically advanced civilization who were said to possess almost mystical qualities beyond the average human group. Some people dismissed it as fiction, but others have become convinced that the island is real and that it was submerged under the water thousands of years ago. There's a theory that Atlantis was 
was not submerged though and that it actually was frozen in the ice of Antarctica. In April 2018, the YouTube channel Conspiracy Depot shared a Google Earth image which shows a strange area in the Antarctic ice. The image shows a series of lines that, according to the video, have an artificial origin and have recently been exposed due to melting ice in the area. Now they say the object has split into three parts that are all about seven meters long. It almost seems too perfect to be formed naturally. Okay, moving on to number seven now, we have Nazis. I remember one video I did a while back where I discussed in detail the theory that Nazi party survived World War II and are currently living in a base on the dark side of the moon. Yeah. That was an interesting theory, but so is this. A lot of people think that this secret base was actually in Antarctica. They say that scientists in the Third Reich mapped out an area of rivers and caves across Antarctica. Then they discovered a large underground lake. They decided this would be the perfect place for their secret base. They supposedly called it Base 22 or New Berlin. For the conspiracy theorists who believe this, they are now split between the ones who think the base is just lost beneath the ice and the ones who think it is still home to a Nazi community all these years on. Next up at number 6 now we have the Bloop. You guys may have heard me mention this one before. The Bloop was a nickname given to a strange sound picked up by hydrophones across the Pacific in 1997. The hydrophones are essentially like giant microphones listing out for sounds. They are positioned over 5,000 kilometers apart from each other so it's not very often they are all picking up the same sound at the same time except this time. A number of them picked up the same loud ultra low frequency sound across the Pacific. Take a listen. Now to many people that sounds like an animal, some sort of creature that made a noise so loud it was picked up across Earth's biggest ocean. If such a creature did exist it would be bigger than anything we've ever seen. That's the only way it could make a sound that loud. Well, scientists say this is not true and that the sound was actually caused by ice quakes in the Antarctic. It's the sound of ice breaking up and cracking and the sound was picked up as the bloop. Some people still aren't buying that though and say that the sound may have come from Antarctica but it was definitely biological in nature. Moving on to number 5 now we have the hollow earth. Now you've all heard of the flat earth theory that we talked about earlier, but have you heard of the hollow earth theory? As you can probably guess from the name, it proposes that the planet is entirely hollow empty on the inside, that we all live on a shell on the surface that is about 500 miles thick which is actually only a fraction of the way to the centre of the earth. So where does Antarctica come into this? Well in December 2016 a study was published indicating there seems to be a massive anomaly underneath the ice of Antarctica. Some researchers believe it to be the remains of a truly massive asteroid that is more than twice the size of the one that wiped out the dinosaurs. Another theory though is that it could be the portal or entrance to this hollow earth we live on. I also read an article about Russian scientists drilling down through the ice in Antarctica. Hopefully they don't just kind of pierce through to the hollowness. What? Moving on to number 4 now we have Area 51. It doesn't matter what kind of video I do about conspiracy theories, Area 51 will always seem to crop up in conversation even in Antarctica. In March 2018 news articles began circulating about Arrival Heights, a secret laboratory located deep in the mountains of Antarctica that is called Area 122. That kind of makes you think of how many secret bases there have been between Area 51 and Area 122. Well, I guess the answer is 71, but yeah. Journalists from New Zealand investigated the lab and found that it was filled with very old technology. It was very strange, like something out of a movie. The computers had floppy disk drives. Some of you guys might be too young to even know what that is. There was also a huge computer called the Dobson Spectrometer, which had a periscope sticking up out of the roof. So what is this whole place all for then? Well, they say it's to study the hole in the ozone layer above the continent. The old equipment is so sensitive that even breathing or speaking too loudly is said to damage it. Some some people say that the base is hiding more secrets and that Area 122 could be the new Area 51. Moving on to number 3 now we have the pyramids. In 2013 an article in ScienceRaid.com claimed that three ancient pyramids had been discovered in the Antarctic by a team of American and European scientists. Relatively little is known about the pyramids and the team behind their discovery has remained quite silent about the whole thing ever since. One piece of information that emerged was that they were planning an expedition to the pyramids to research them properly 
and determine if they were natural or man-made. If they're natural, they could simply be the product of erosion or tectonic activity, but if they're man-made, that would open up the suggestion of an ancient civilization. We know of only a handful of civilizations that built pyramids as big as the ones that have been discovered in Antarctica, most notably the Aztecs and the ancient Egyptians. Conspiracy theorists are already jumping on board with the Antarctica pyramids being proof of a lost pyramid building civilization. Next up on number 2 now we have the big melt. As I'm sure you're all aware, Antarctica is covered in a sheet of ice. At some points it's 3 miles thick and as I'm sure you've seen on the news, the ice caps are melting. When you see those images of glaciers drifting out into the ocean, it's natural to think, what if it all goes? Well, that would obviously be a disaster. Some estimates say that if all the ice on the Antarctica sheet was to melt, sea levels would rise by 200 feet. To give you an idea of what this would do, the entire east coast of the US would be underwater and Florida would pretty much vanish. It would just be entirely underwater. Another scary aspect of all of this is that we don't know how much or how quickly this could happen or even what it would look like. Climate scientists still have a lot to understand when it comes to this process, but their worst case scenario paints a pretty grim picture. And finally, number one now, we have ancient diseases. As we all know, Antarctica is pretty cold. So cold, land is buried under two kilometers of ice. Recently in Siberia, in part of the Arctic Circle, nomadic tribes were affected by an outbreak of anthrax that came as a result of permafrost melting and unleashing an ancient strain. A 12 year old boy died and thousands of reindeer became infected. Obviously, there are many reasons to be worried about the ice caps melting, but it seems that ancient diseases could could be trapped under the ice that modern day humans and animals have no resistance to. As the ice is so thick, we literally cannot know what is under there and what might be lurking. It seems that the permafrost provides the perfect conditions for bacteria to remain alive dormant for millions of years. Scientists are worried that a Pandora's box of illnesses we don't know how to cure are out there waiting to emerge one day. Coming into number 10 we have Old Man Iceberg. And they called him Old Man Iceberg. I feel like I want to make up an urban legends about this guy. Look at him, he does not look happy. He looks like those pesky kids won't keep off his lawn. This image was posted to reddit by redditor strumming music and got 3.7 thousand upvotes which is basically reddit viral. One commenter, Eucopus, said, You know what they say, what's above the water is the tip of the iceberg. I've left a link to the actual reddit source for this one so you can read some of the pretty hilarious blue iceberg jokes that were made after that comment. I can't read them out because we are a family friendly channel, but they did give me a little laugh I have to say. Ooh, coming into number 9 we have the Titanic slash Olympic conspiracy. Of course the Titanic was going to feature on this list, but it hitting the infamous iceberg and 1503 people dying may not have been the end to this scary story. Some say it may have steered into the giant berg in the North Atlantic Ocean on purpose. So says a wild conspiracy theory anyway. So let me catch you up, the Titanic had a sister ship called the Olympic. Oddly the Olympic also met some misfortune. In 1911, the Olympic collided with a naval ship, but insurers wouldn't pay out because they said that the Olympic was to blame. Some say in order to get their money, the White Star Line switched the Olympic and the Titanic in a classic switcheroo. Some Freaky Friday stuff right there. The Titanic, actually the Olympic, was ploughed into the iceberg and sunk purposefully so the company could actually get their money. The theory gained so much coverage coverage that scores of online articles have been written perpetuating the conspiracy as well as disproving it. I'm gonna say though, I don't believe it. As much as they may have wanted their money, I don't think that they would have not had enough lifeboats on the ship if they were planning to sink it. Coming into number 8, we have the iceberg drifting to the village. Ah, oh my god this really freaks me out. Imagine looking out of your window and seeing a whopping great iceberg. Like in some ways, cool, but in other ways, like run, 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 run. This mammoth iceberg rocked up on the west coast of Greenland encroaching on a tiny village. Now, the entire village was evacuated for the fear that it would carve and spark a giant tsunami flooding the village. Obviously from this picture we can see how big the iceberg is, but actually imagine being there and seeing this towering over your town with your own eyes. You can have a little look at this footage of an iceberg carving. Seriously stressful, can you imagine if that was right outside your window? Seriously. Coming into number 7, we have stranded on an iceberg. Can you think of anything more terrifying than being stranded on an iceberg? Because like 
icy death, right? Well, it seems in March 2015, two teenagers got themselves stranded on an iceberg in Lake Michigan when they went out on the ice as the weather warmed up. A mini iceberg formed as the ice began to melt, leaving the boys stranded 40 yards from the shore. Basically, don't go walking on lakes when it's spring, you just don't know. Not so frozen after all. Emergency services were called as the boys easily could have been lost on their tiny iceberg, or they could have died from exposure, or fallen in the water and drowned. Either way though, stressful. Coming into number 6, we have when Delaware broke away from Antarctica. Delaware. Delaware is pretty big, it's a freaking state, albeit a small one, but still, it's big enough to be the home of nearly a million people. So imagine Delaware in size, if you possibly can, picture it in your mind. Mind. Okay, an iceberg the size of Delaware broke off and away from Antarctica. Now, if Delaware floated away from the rest of the United States, people would have something to say about it. But worryingly, when the mammoth berg broke away, it didn't make front page news. Weighing an estimated 1 trillion tons, the iceberg formerly made up 12% of the Larsen Sea ice shelf. If this honey melts, as icebergs tend to do once they've broken away from main ice sheets, it will add to the rising sea levels. Also, to put this in perspective, the iceberg that sank the Titanic was only around 300 to 400 feet long. This one, once again, is the size of Delaware. Ah Ooh, coming into number five, we have the alien iceberg. Ah! Flat earthers and alien lovers rejoice, this is the icy conspiracy for you. A perfectly rectangle iceberg caught the world's attention in October 2018 when NASA ice discovered it on a flyover of the Larsen Sea ice shelf. Now, some flat earthers were saying that what we're seeing is part of the much famed ice wall. The wall. Honestly, classic ice wall. If I had a dollar for every time I'd heard about the ice wall whilst working in this job, I swear. Others say that actually, that this very geometric iceberg was the work of aliens for some reason because everything we don't understand must be aliens right right nasa then shared a picture of a triangular iceberg but it didn't look quite as clean cut as the rectangle now the official line is that the iceberg is pretty straight when it first breaks away from ice shelves it's only wind and waves that forms their shapes but i have to say this did look perfectly rectangular and the image isn't a fake, so what is going on? Coming into number 4, another what is going on moment, we have the mystery of the green icebergs in Antarctica. Green icebergs exist and have been vexing scientists for 200 years. Have a look at these absolute emerald beauties, what stunners! But indeed, with every strange and beautiful unsolved mystery comes a beautiful harebrained conspiracy or urban legend. Some say that the bergs are the jewels of the ocean god Poseidon. Others say that they're where the US dump their chemicals. Others say they carry a key nutrient for marine life. You decide. I like the Poseidon jewels thing, I think that's kind of nice. Green iceberg, seriously. Okay, another coloured iceberg. Coming in at number three, we have the mystery of bloody ice. Ah, blood fools, we meet again in another top ten list. Do you want to have a look at Antarctica's bleeding iceberg? Of course you do, you love the gore. Here we have pictures of blood falls, and it was first discovered in 1911 by explorer Griffith Taylor. A lot of people, including the explorer, were freaked out by the gruesome sight, although they originally attributed the gory sight to red algae. It turns out that that was not the explanation. What was? Iron, like in actual blood. Iron oxide, anyway. There was water passing through, it was making it red. It looked gross, it wasn't actually that scary. Unless you saw it in the flesh, because I'd be like, ah! Death iceberg. Ooh. Speaking of death icebergs, at number two we have the Doomsday Glacier. Meet the Thwaites Glacier, a place so remote that 28 humans have only ever set foot there. The glacier may hold the fate of the world in its icy body, which is pretty intense. Far, far, far away from the glacier are low lying coastal cities like Miami and New York, home to trillions of dollars of real estate and businesses and a lot of people. In fact, half of the world's population lays within 50 miles of the coastline. So, with that in mind, once again, Again, our fate rests with the Thwaites Glacier, one of the largest on the planet. The glacier has been dubbed the Doomsday Glacier for a reason. Now, it won't melt overnight, we're monitoring it right now, but when it does, it will destabilize the rest of the West Antarctic ice, and sea levels could then rise 10 feet, and because of tidal bulges, around 13 feet in Boston and New York. Geologist Richard Alley said West Antarctica could do to the coastlines of the world what Hurricane Sandy did in a few hours to New York. 
New York City. Worrying. This makes me so sad at number one. I'm sorry to even tell you about this. It makes me want to cry. Finally, coming into number one, we have the death of the penguins. In February 2016, 150,000 Antarctic penguins died after an iceberg the size of Rome drifted into their home turf. The rogue berg cut off their ability to hunt for food as it landlocked them away from their hunting ground. Since 2011, the colony of 160,000 penguins has shrunk to just 10,000. The colony is likely to be driven to extinction within the next 10 years as a direct result of the iceberg, which makes me sad. Long live the penguins. Starting off number 10 now, we have Blood Falls. In 1911, scientists noticed something pretty horrifying around cliffs in Antarctica. It looked like some of them were oozing blood. It shocked the world. What could possibly be producing these rivers of blood? Was there something hidden within the ice that we didn't know about? Something that could only exist in these hostile alien conditions of Antarctica? At the time, scientists believed it was being caused by algae discoloring the water. The hypothesis was never verified though. In 2017, the mystery was finally solved thanks to research by the University of Alaska Fairbanks. The deep red colouring is due to oxidised iron in brine salt water. It's essentially the same process that makes iron go dark red when it rusts. When the iron rich salt water comes into contact with the oxygen on the surface, the iron oxidises and this colours the water and ice red. I think we can all breathe a sigh of relief now that there isn't some hellish blood monster living under the Antarctic ice. Next to band number 9 now we have the abandoned huts. On November 1st 1911, British explorer Robert Falcon Scott departed from Cape Evans on his Terra Nova expedition, trying to become the first human to reach the South Pole. They made it to the South Pole, but sadly they found they had been beaten to it by a group of Norwegians led by Amundsen. The team faced unusually bad weather on their return journey and tragically died before they could even reach their hut with all of their supplies. The hut was used by another team in 1917, but after that it was abandoned. For years it was slowly covered in ice and snow until 1956 when a US expeditionary party dug it out. It was found to be in a remarkably well preserved state. The beds were as they left them, so too were their scientific instruments. Canned food still sits on the shelves. A London newspaper from that time is on one of the desks. The frozen and dry environment of Antarctica have preserved a lot of things, but decay does still occur there. Visitors to the Discovery Hut discovered the now century old seal meat as smelling quite rancid, and some people thought that the huts themselves are now affected by fungal decay. Moving on to number 8 now, we have bacteria. In 2008, scientists managed to revive bacterium extracted from Antarctic ice that was 8 million years old. You heard me right, 8 million years. Right away, many people became concerned. Was this a danger? It sounded a bit like the start of a Hollywood movie where the bacteria goes on to wipe out the whole of humanity. The scientists assured the public though that there was nothing to worry about and that the bacteria was unlikely to cause human diseases. You'll note that they said unlikely though. It's not definitely impossible. This bacteria is so old that when it came into existence 8 million years ago, the common ancestor of humans and chimpanzees was alive on the planet. So, how are these things still alive? Well, Paul Falowski of Rutgers University described the bacteria as having been in a suspended state of animation for 8 million years, and that global warming melting glaciers could result in the release of more ancient organisms into the sea. Next to our number 7 now, we have the pyramid. In November 2016, the internet was abuzz with talk of a pyramid that had been found buried in the Antarctic ice. Now, before you dismiss this as nonsense, take a look at this picture. Yeah. That does look a lot like a pyramid. It was first discovered by the British Antarctic Expedition of 1910 to 1913. They were stunned by its appearance and decided to name it the Pyramid, a name still used on geological surveys of the area. It's located in the Ellsworth Mountains, which is a range more than 400 kilometers long. The pyramid is one of the peaks of this mountain range. Naturally, you know what I'm going to say next. Many conspiracy theorists stated that this is proof of an ancient civilization that lived on Antarctica before being consumed by the ice and their existence covered up by today's governments. Of course, experts have dismissed all of this, saying that pyramids are not a complicated shape and are not an uncommon appearance in nature. What do you guys think? Next up at number 6 now, we have the lake. Lake Vostok is one of the biggest lakes on the planet. If you've never heard of it, 
don't worry that's probably because Lake Rostock is buried underneath more than 2 miles of ice in Antarctica. It's been covered in ice for at least 15 million years but it's still liquid down there. The crushing layer of ice from above and geothermal activity below have ensured that. Its presence was first suggested in the 1960s by a Russian pilot who noticed a large smooth patch of ice above the lake from the air. Radar experiments by British and Russian researchers in 1996 confirmed the lake's existence. The lake is massive, 143 miles long, 31 miles wide and up to 2,625 feet deep. In 2012, Russian scientists managed to successfully drill a hole down to the lake's water. They believe that down there is microbial life that is unique from everything else here on Earth, having been isolated for 15 million years. Now the search begins. Next to number 5 now we have Allen Hills 84001. In 1984, a team of US meteorite hunters discovered a Martian meteorite in Antarctica's ice. It was only about 4.3 pounds but by 1996 it was causing quite a stir when a group of scientists claimed they had found evidence of microscopic life in the actual meteorite. Was this proof of life on Mars or at least that life used to be on Mars because they thought it was fossilized? The media went into a frenzy either way. Even US President Bill Clinton gave a speech about it. The hysteria was because the strange chain structures on that meteorite looked like they could have been fossilized bacteria. There was also the fact that the meteorite broke off from Mars about 17 million years ago during a time when Mars had liquid water on its surface and carbon dioxide in its atmosphere. It seemed like life could have been around then. Eventually these claims were rejected though and the features of the meteorite were explained without requiring life to be present. The meteorite now remains on display in the Smithsonian Museum of Natural History. Moving on to number 4 now we have the dinosaur. In February 2019, the fossil of a new species of reptile was announced. It had been found by researchers in the Antarctic ice during a 2010-2011 expedition. It's believed to be an early relative of dinosaurs who lived in Antarctica millions of years before the continent drifted to its position over the South Pole and became uninhabitable for most complex life forms. Around 250 million years ago, Antarctica was covered in lush forests and rivers with many species of wildlife living there, including reptiles. The temperature is thought to have almost never dropped below freezing point. The scientists named the iguana sized reptile Antarctanax shackletoni. Antarctanax translates to Antarctic King, and shackletoni is in honor of the Antarctic explorer Ernest Shackleton. Moving on to number three now, we have Patchy Mass. In June 2018, YouTube user Wow For Real made a video showing his discovery of a 14 mile structure buried in Antarctica. He made the discovery using Google Maps and described it as a patchy mass that you could easily see from outer space. He said he'd used Google Maps to search the entire continent before and had never found anything like this. He even pointed out that there were strange brush strokes over the mass which made him think someone was trying to cover this up. It didn't take long before people started speculating about what was going on here. The YouTuber himself put forward the idea that if the brush effect was removed, perhaps we see some sort of giant UFO mothership buried in ice. In all probability, it's probably just a research facility, but we still don't know for sure yet as this strange block still remains on Google Maps to this day. You can even go and see it for yourself. Coming in at number two now, we have the wreckage. In January 2013, three Canadian men took off on a plane from the Amundsen Scott South Pole Research Station en route to an Italian research base in Terra Nova Bay. At some point during the journey, the emergency transmitter went off and a search party was sent sent out to find them. Bad weather hampered rescue efforts and after 6 days they finally found the plane but it was too late to save them. It had crashed into one of Antarctica's highest mountains. The rescue team were unable to get into the cockpit and were only able to retrieve some luggage. After 4 hours there they determined it was too risky to stay any longer as the weather was taking a serious turn for the worse and they were afraid of an avalanche occurring. It took 9 months before another team set out during Antarctica's summer period to retrieve the frozen remains of the 3 Canadian. Canadian men. And finally number one now we have Endurance. We talked about the explorer Shackleton earlier. Well Endurance was the name of the ship that he used to go to Antarctica in the first place. The ship was abandoned by Shackleton and his team when she was crushed by ice in the Weddell Sea off Antarctica causing her to sink. In the years since then there have been three expeditions that have tried and failed to locate Endurance. In 2018 that changed though. A team at the Scott Polar Research Institute launched a new search using more sophisticated technology such as GPS and drones to help them see possible routes in the ice. They also used an autonomous underwater vehicle. The video you're watching right now was released in February 2019 and according to what I've read, the search for endurance is happening at this moment. 
looking for a ship thousands of feet beneath the frigid waves. I thought I'd end on this one because it's not been discovered quite yet and that's kind of exciting. There's a lot more to uncover in the incredible world of Antarctica. Kicking off the list at number 10, Arctic hyenas. Only a few years ago scientists discovered teeth. Yeah, how fun is that? Ancient teeth from Arctic hyenas. Lovely. Now when you think of hyenas, you would never imagine that they once roamed over Europe and Asia 5 million years ago, right? That's not what we think about when we imagine them scary and drooling in our brains. Remains from these Arctic beasts have been found all over the world, not just the Yukon permafrost. Evolutionary biologist Jack Sung studies prehistoric carnivores and he knew within minutes that these recent Yukon molars belong to Arctic hyenas, aka Chasmoporthetes. Number 9. Frozen Treasure As far as frozen treasure goes, this is a very recent discovery. We don't find these often or ever. As a matter of fact. Yeah, treasure frozen in ice. This sounds like something from Ocarina of Time. I'm so excited. Back in 2013, an anonymous mountain climber, can't imagine why they chose to stay hidden, they stumbled across a box filled with jewels jammed in the ice. Yeah, hear what I just said, a box of jewels in ice. They had to like breathe on it a bit, <sighs> melt it up, and then finally pull it out. But alas, once they reported it to the French officers, this box contained around 100 precious gems. Precious gems. This was quite the find. Emeralds, sapphires, rupees, you name it. The box was worth 300,000 US dollars, roughly. I find a 20 on the ground, I'm calling in sick. Game over. Where did this treasure come from? Well, since it was discovered on Mont Blanc, officials were able to trace the lost gems back to an Air India flight that crashed on the mountain back in 1966. The lives of 117 passengers were sadly lost and because of the conditions, it's been next to impossible to recover anything from the mountain, especially that long ago, right? Somehow these family gems were able to see the light again and yes, before you even ask, the owner did return the gems. Only the thing is, two families claim the goods, so. Someone's not telling their truth, my friend. Someone's lying, that, that means lying, right? I never knew what that meant. I don't know, I saw someone do it and I was like, I like that sound. Interestingly enough, in 2014, a French treasure hunter named Daniel Roche found 50 more pieces of jewelry from the same glacier. So yeah, the world's melting, but we're also finding gold, so. Eh. Number eight, Western camel bones. Scientific name being Camelops hesternus. <laughs> it's a Harry Potter spell, turns into a camel. Camelops hesternus. Meaning, yesterday's camel in Latin, these bones first appeared in 2008 when gold miners were working in Hunter Creek, just 60 miles away from the Alaskan border, when they suddenly stumbled across these massive bones. The last time these bones were operating, I guess attached to some meat, was 75 to 125,000 years ago. The remains were in such great condition because of the awful surrounding conditions, right? It was so cold that scientists could still extract DNA. And that DNA told us that 10 million years ago, roughly, Western camels split from modern day camels. They were like, hey, it's not working out. You got the two hump thing, I got the one hump. It's cold, you're hot, I don't know. I never called the imaginary camel hot, but here we are. That thumbs up for hot camels. Number seven, blood red waterfalls. I'm sure you've seen this at some point, so I have to of course mention in a part two. If I came across this in the wild, I would be quite alarmed. I would ask some questions as well. On the southern side of our planet, there's a waterfall in Antarctica that is blood red. The edge of Taylor Glacier houses this one of a kind waterfall. It pours right into Lake Bonnie. Now, millions of years ago when sea levels rose up, glaciers formed at the top of said lake. So this melting water that's slowly leaking out from, you know, a quarter a mile deep, this water is three times saltier and apparently three times scarier. When the iron rich water reaches the air, it looks bloody, therefore scary. I'll put my hands back down now, let's move on. Number six, giant beaver skull. So the Yukon permafrost, it's a hot spot. Ironically, it seems, for fossils. Lots of ancient animals stuck in time and in great condition, luckily for us. Scientific name for this one is Castroides ohianus. Sure. That sounded like the closest it'll ever be. This giant beaver was on average larger than us humans. They were massive. As Jurassic Park as this thing looks, it only ate pond weeds, which is pretty hilarious. You would think otherwise looking at it, right? One of the largest rodents in history, and they were probably just really cute, and they ate little plants. 50,000 years ago, they didn't chomp on trees, just weeds. Nice, we like that. Go eat all the weeds. I hate when they touch my feet when I'm swimming in lakes. Like others on this list, they eventually moved north. They followed the ideal conditions to survive in, and that led them ultimately to their icy grave that is now the Yukon permafrost, where we go, Wow, 
more teeth. Number five, Antarctica Pyramid. Over on our history channel, Bumblebee, I talk about the pyramids of Egypt a lot. Maybe a little too much. Once I heard about pyramids in Antarctica, I had to know what was going on. Back in 2016, a mountain in Antarctica was trending online. And we all immediately thought that it was evidence of an ancient civilization because that's what we want to see, right? That's what we're all waiting for. We're like, James Webb, please show us something scary. Eric Rignot, a professor of Earth System Sciences at the University of California, reached out to live science when this was all unfolding, adding that, quote, pyramid shapes are not impossible. Many peaks partially look like pyramids, but they only have one or two faces like that. Rarely four. Yeah, that's all it is, just a natural pyramid. Or maybe it's aliens, who knows? I'm leaning towards the latter of the two. Number four, 90 million year old rainforest. Back in 2020, while we were all catching up on Ozark, disappointing finale, fossil traces in West Antarctica were found. Now this time it wasn't a giant beaver or a bloody waterfall from back in time, I don't know. This time it was kinda nice. This time it was an ancient rainforest. 90 million years ago when dinosaurs were once walking around, Antarctica was once a paradise. Right? a sight to see. Researchers compare Antarctica in the Cretaceous period to New Zealand today, right? It was hot, it was gorgeous, with most days on an average of 12 degrees Celsius, like Seattle, right? Some hot days and then some Seattle days. I love how scientists compare eras with modern day city temperatures. Oh, the ice age? Oh, a lot of Regina energy there. Yeah, a lot of Western Canada, very cold, not ideal for dinosaurs. But apparently it was a paradise, so we missed out. So cold. Number three, meteorite. For this one, we're gonna switch it up, right? Taylor McWaters, I like to jazz it up every now and then. This time, scientists found ice in a meteorite, not rock in ice. Yeah, little flip flip. That's always a good time. James Webb is about to show us how much water is in space and personally, I'm not ready for it. Back in 1990, the actor 094 meteorite was discovered in the Algerian mountains. The rock was dated back to 4.6 billion years ago. So scientists studied the meteorite with synchrotron radiation based X-ray nanotomography. That sentence was choppy because I couldn't say it all in one go, obviously. This led scientists to find evidence of tiny pores. Pores believed to have been fossilized ice crystals. Now these pores may have come from when the meteorite crossed this snow line out in space. The snow line is a sphere around the sun and it's the exact point where ice on meteorites melts, right? That's the snow line, the more you know. This study was to hopefully find out where water comes from in the galaxy, and it seems that it came from a lot further than we all thought. I got goosebumps saying that, I didn't like that. James Webb stuff today, I'm like, oh, we're so small. Number two, Grasshopper Glacier. Yeah, if you're not a fan of bugs, you can go ahead and skip to number one. I won't take it personally. I'll save some bits for that one too. A glacier in Montana is home to many grasshoppers and locusts. Yeah, locusts, it's a fun word. Imagine heading to a glacier and you forget bug spray. Ah, what a fool you are. Appropriately named Grasshopper Glacier, the mile-long glacier near Crook City holds the remains of extinct grasshoppers. Yeah, they're not alive, don't worry. They're just frozen and then stuck looking at you like this. That's better. These poor guys were traveling to find new life and they must have got caught up in a blizzard a long time ago. Now they're stuck here for another few hundred years. This reminds me of those suckers that have a gross bug in the center, you know? It's like a bug. Why do people buy those? I would never buy them, it's so gross. Number one, fish eat fish. If you know anything about me is that I'm not a fan of lakes. Not at all, no. Oceans, sure, if I can see my feet, we're grooving, okay, we're laughing. If I'm looking down in goggles and I can't see shit, I'm out of the lake. I don't even strap them on my head, I just put my eyes in them and rest them on the water. This video went viral not too long ago and it, it's very real. These two brothers were fishing on Indiana's Wawasee Lake and they saw a pike eating a bass, only both parties were completely still. Both parties were already dead. Both were completely frozen. How epic. What happened? How did this, how are they stuck like this? They posted the photo originally and nobody believed that it was real. So they had to follow up and post a video where they actually removed this scene of events from the ice. Yeah, I would think this is fake too. This looks like a life lesson somewhere that has to be told. It's a fish eating a fish frozen, you know? There's bigger fish out there. There's smaller fish out there. Sometimes fish freeze. I don't know, I'll do like nine more. I don't know what the message is.